Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Williams Farm Sugar House. My name's Chip Williams. Um, I am the fifth generation of my family to, to um, make maple syrup. Um, my dad's in the back. We have him working today. Um, my grandfather always told me to wear out the old things first, so we'll keep him in the back and, and uh, have, <laughs> have him working. But yeah, we can, at some point, if you want to swing through, say hi. Um, definitely can. Um, my sister Kelly is around. Some, oh, right in front. Yes, right in front. Kelly takes care of um, kitchen things on the weekends, um, flips pancakes, a um, little so social media as well for us. Um, my other sister Casey is not able to make it today. She's in Denver for work. Um, my mom as well. Um, she's not able to make it. She's spent countless hours down here. Um, my wife, Alyssa, and Yay. Alyssa. <laughs> so Alyssa helps out when she can, um, but she really keeps things on track at home, which allows me to spend time here, yeah. which yeah. thank you, yeah. And my three boys, Miles, Reed, and Jacob, are the, are the, are the sixth generation. Um, sixth generation. Uh, we haven't been able to get much work out of them yet, but they are very good taste testers. So um, I guess now I'll hand things over to the governor. Um, she, I've heard she has a sweet announcement. Uh, sorry, that was, that was bad. Okay, thanks, Chip. It's great. Um, thank you so much, Chip, and the Lieutenant Governor and I and the team are so happy to be here today with all of you, and um, I just, you know, Chip, it's really special. I was reading about Milton Hubbard Williams, who a few hundred years ago started this whole thing off, and it's a beautiful thing um, when you think about, you know, the number of generations that have that have continued this and I think will continue this. And so, you know, we, we really value that and we cherish, um, you know, aspects within our economy that, that really draw multi-generations in. And, and our, our rural economy is certainly a great example of that. And so it's really, it's super cool, everything that you have going on here, Chip. And uh, we look forward to, to, to meeting your dad um, this is a very sweet visit here, Maple <laughs> Month, and, uh, and we're just delighted to be here. And we're delighted to be joined by members of our team, um, our Secretary and Undersecretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe and Ashley Stolba. Our, <laughs> we're doing a great job. Our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper. And come on up, Ashley. Yeah. Deerfield's Yeah, okay, you all you all know her. You all know her, but she now officially is the leader for the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture. And it's really, really, really exciting. Really proud to have Ashley on the team. Um, delighted to be joined, of course, by Senator Joe Comerford and also Representative Natalie Blaze, who's just been fantastic. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to cut right to it. A, a couple things. One, um, both the Lieutenant Governor and I have spent a lot of time in Western Massachusetts, Central Massachusetts. I think we both ran for these jobs because we love our whole state. And we want to be an administration that is about our whole state. And I got to tell you, for, for us today uh, in particular, uh, there's no place that I think we'd rather be in the entire state. It's a beautiful, beautiful state. We just came from Greenfield. We're up at Just Roots Farm. And to be able to come here and be uh, at the Sugar House is just awesome. Uh, we understand, too, when it comes to maple sugaring, there's a lot going on economically. 300 maple sugar producers, 70,000 gallons of syrup, 1,000 jobs, 15,000 acres of protected woodland, and a $15 million industry in Massachusetts alone. So it's super, super important. We also know that maple sugaring profits allow farms to continue work year-round, um, serving oftentimes as a secondary crop, which is so, so important. And I think the Williams Farm is just a great example of our Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program in action. 
Um, and we're super, super excited about that. And, you know, I w does, uh, my, my folks have been back, I grew up in a little small town in New Hampshire on 40 acres, and uh, my folks, probably this week, the kids will come from school to tap the, uh, the, the maple sugar trees, which is, has always been a treat, you know. Uh, but to see a real enterprise in operation is really is really cool. So we wanted to come out today to celebrate all of you and to make an important announcement. And the announcement is this, and I, I really want to thank your fantastic delegation because we worked we worked so closely with Joe and Natalie, and, and, and I'm Maura, and she's Kim, and they are Joe and Natalie, and that's how we do work. We understand that. And we're so grateful to them for their work in informing what is a really strong, we think, through our budget proposal, rural economy agenda. Really, really exciting. And one of the things that we're gonna do is what we are announcing today, and that is, for the first time ever, uh, we are creating the position of a Director of Rural Affairs. Yeah. It's great. It's great. And we do this because, you know, you can talk a lot about being an administration for all of Massachusetts, but it's not going to happen by accident. It's going to happen with intentionality and focus. And so we're going to have this director. The director is going to be housed within the Secretariat of Economic Development. Uh, Secretary Howe, by the way, is a proud Williams College grad and a part-time Williamstown resident. Um, and it's going to be super, super exciting. Yeah. Don't hold the Williams thing against her. It's okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, but look, 181 rural towns, 181 rural towns in Massachusetts, and we are looking to serve all the way from Deerfield to Clarksburg to Truro with this director position. They're going to be taking a whole of government approach, coordinating across our secretariats um, and all of our agencies to make sure that we are doing all we can for our rural economies, focusing on cultivating economic development in these communities. The director is going to hit the ground running on day one, I promise you. They'll be conducting a review of all state grant opportunities to see where communities can maximize potential. We're going to be hosting office hours where folks can come and chat, maybe get a technical assistance and connect some of the dots. Um, and we're committed, of course, to maintaining and updating the Community Compact Connector Calendar so that our smaller municipalities can find all the state grants in one place and better coordinate on the application process. So we're super excited about this. Uh, we want to be a government that is truly about representation, and that means representation of all communities and all folks across Massachusetts. So thank you for the partnership I know we're going to have, and we're super, super excited to be here with all of you today. I'm going to turn it over uh, to our fabulous teammate, our Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. You know, every day is a good day when you can when you can start not only here in Western Mass, but look, I got to see the gov hold the chicken, and she knows what she's doing. <laughs> you collected eggs. I, col I collected the eggs. Yeah, I collected the eggs. They were still warm. They were good. Thank you so much, Governor, and thanks to uh, the Williams Farm team for being here. We feel like so much gratitude to be in these positions and to walk in and see this wonderful reception and the work that we hope to do, that we are doing right now. It really means a lot uh, to us that you all came out and took time out of your day to be here, not only to welcome us, but to continue what we hope will be just a, a really strong partnership. Part of having this new uh, position is making sure that we know what's happening on the ground in ways that we can help. Oftentimes, I'm a former mayor of a, of a city just north of Boston, Salem, you may have heard of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it can, it can be lonely in local government, and you can sometimes feel that programs don't necessarily apply for you, even more so for our rural communities who are doing the same work, educating kids, keeping neighborhoods safe, investing in that infrastructure, the places where people make memories, lead to this high quality of life. 
but sometimes our programs don't always respond to the needs, the technical assistance, the varying, uh, you know, uh, people and personnel and capacities that exist. And this director is really going to put us in a position to better know how we can store the resources that we have in a way that's going to be meaningful to people on the ground, improving that quality of life, connecting economic opportunities, and making sure we're using these resources in a way that you're going to see and feel. And I can't say enough about how excited I am about this. Because local government, whether you're in a large city or a small community, you're helping people. It's on the ground, the things that people rely on the most. And this director post is going to help us strengthen those connections. And just want to echo the governor's comments, thanking both Joe and Natalie. Um, they came to us early. They've lined this runway up. So much of the data collection in the Rural Policy Advisory Commission has been done already that we can actually use this person to help do some of the work that we know needs doing, and not just be studying it and assessing it because of the work that you did previously. So thank you for the work that you've already done and for really leaning in. We had a, a, good, a good script here um, to get started, so appreciate it. You know, earlier today we were at a community farm in Greenfield operated by Just Roots. Some of you may be familiar with it. Yeah, terrific nonprofit. That's why we're smiling so much, right? What a great way, balm for the soul, you know, to be uh, in that space uh, on a, on a, with an organization that's committed to promoting vegetable gardening, growing food on municipal land, increasing knowledge about the demand for local food in Franklin County. Um, we have a small community farm in Salem, and I just need to tell you, the community building that happens there, I was out picking rocks every weekend, um, and happy to do it, by the way, right? Um, so Just Roots is one of our recipients for our food security infrastructure grants. We got to see what they're doing with those resources, and even more importantly, what they hope to do with the next round of resources. Um, because that's what that program is about, delivering on those infrastructure needs and communities coming together when they see a need, neighbors in need, and like bridging those gaps. And it was a great way to start the day. And our budget proposal makes sure that those food security infrastructure grants are continue, are permanent, and have, a, I would say, consistent lifeline to our farmers, to our fishermen, to our food banks, our retailers. I was on the, the Facey family farm and talked about their food and security grant that they used on their dairy farm to help improve food processing. I know they've got another one in the hopper. Those small dollars sometimes can make a meaningful impact, and we're grateful to be able to make this permanent, something that started during the pandemic, and continue to help um, deliver resources in that whole local food market. And I just wanted to give you a snapshot of some of the other things in our new fiscal year budget proposed uh, for the next year, a number of other key investments that we think rural communities can benefit from. One is increasing rural school aid by $7.5 million. <laughs> We know that the way the math works in rural communities where there are less kids, it doesn't mean your overhead costs are less. And so we're hoping that we can look at this formula in a way that can provide additional funding for those fixed cost needs for school districts and exploring um, strategies to improve longer term operational efficiencies. How do we work together knowing that it may not look the same in a rural district as it does in a urban district, but we still want to serve kids, all kids, well. Um, we're looking at ways we can increase payment in lieu of taxes, those pilot payments on state-owned land. So much of the land uh, that we know are in rural communities are contributing positively to us overall and environmental reason, uh, for environmental reasons, but the formula doesn't really help in rural communities where you don't have land values that are as high. We're looking at increasing uh, base funding for the regional transit authorities. Our RTAs uh, provide transportation needs, so that has been increased. We're also looking to provide some innovation grants. There's a lot happening in the space of how people can get uh, around, micro transit, on-demand transit. Everybody doesn't live uh, their life by a schedule, a bus schedule. And here in places that are more rural, frankly, that can be harder because your distances are greater. And so maybe you need a different style of vehicle. How do we bring some innovation to how we think about regional transport to get people to those places that can offer greater food security, avoid food, food deserts, job opportunities, educational opportunities? So there's significant increases there, $9 million uh, for the RTAs and $19 million innovation pot, sort of helping them on the ground tell us how can we be more nimble as we think about transportation. We're expanding support for our one-stop, community one-stop for growth programs, including technical assistance. This is really key. Um, I heard a lot about infrastructure. Yeah, my Muni people are in the house, yes. Local officials know how incredible hard, hard it is to find the dollars necessary for large-scale capital investments. A salt shed, a public services facility, a public safety facility. Uh, these are generational investments, and you're on your own, and it's hard to support that in a budget. We're looking uh, for ways that we can help support through this one stop for growth, both economic development opportunities and thinking deeply about how we can be a real infrastructure partner in those ways. We're also looking at MDARs. It's great to have our MDAR team in the house, our team leader. 
uh, the Mass Grown and Fresher branding campaign, we see a real opportunity to promote food. Look at that menu up there, yeah. right? We know other states are doing that, so whether it's through tourism promotion, through MDAR, supporting our food service economy and making sure people know it's here and ways that we can be that strategic ally as a state. There are three new staff positions to support and bolster the, the uh, Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program, uh, facilitating farmland acquisition and protection, and also then the support on the economic development side to make sure we're thinking about agricultural fears, farmers markets, agricultural education initiatives, we're plugged in. We want, we want this to work. And, you know, lastly, we're proposing significant investments uh, through MassDOT for West East Rail, a project that we know long has been talked about that we want to be in a position to help implement. That's going to include a new director, five full-time employees, $12.5 million to advance other parts of the project, including improvements in Pittsfield and Palmer. You know, there's a lot of... Um, upfront work that you have to do when you're talking about a major project like this, designing, engineering, laying it out. It's all underway and going to be beginning in a way that we think can lead to a meaningful impact in, a, in a, as short a period of time as possible. These are the types of efforts we hope to bring to bear and make sure we're communicating out with this Director of Rural Affairs. We're laser focused on moving this forward. We're going to need your help. It's going to be an individual, but we have individuals across our state government who can work through that collaboration to make sure what's happening on the ground and state policies and programs, how do we make sure that's an integrated agenda as we move forward. So thrilled to be here. Thanks for everything you're doing, and we're certainly looking forward uh, to the work ahead. And let me introduce Senator Joe, someone who needs no introduction, <laughs> Senator Joe Comerford. Hi, everyone. What an honor uh, to be with you today. And can we just take a moment to just get under the, underneath how much good news was just offered by <laughs> Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll. A huge cheer. I had to sort of, I kept trying to pinch myself because I thought this is the administration that voters have sent to Beacon Hill with unbelievable gifted secretariats and commissioners here today. And let me just remind us that this is within the first 100 days of the Healy-Driscoll administration. They promised, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, they promised that they would come back to Western Massachusetts. They promised that they would see us, that they would understand there isn't a one-size-fits-all policy proposal, that we needed help with education, with transportation, with economic development, with land stewardship, with environmental concerns of our farmers. They promised and they are delivering as a priority in their administration. This is nothing to be trifled with. I know we're all here because we understand that. But the kind of demonstrated commitment that Mora and Kim and their secretaries are showing today um, is really nothing short of, I think, a miracle for Western Massachusetts, um, and one that I know that uh, my sister in service, Rep. Blay, Natalie, and I are so deeply grateful for. Um, so I'll just close by saying I, I love working with Natalie Blay. I love working on behalf of our 25 cities and towns in this Senate district. Uh, I have nothing but hope because of the grit and grace of municipal officials um, and because of a gifted gifted Healy Driscoll administration. It's going to take all of us to make sure that the promises articulated today by Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll are maximized. It's going to take Western Massachusetts to come together to help make Rep. Blay and I smarter about what you need, and you're not shy, um, which is good. <laughs> But we, we want to be in it with you because this is an administration that wants to see a rise of Western Massachusetts, that knows we're going to be stronger as a commonwealth as Western Massachusetts gets strong. We're going to become even bigger and more badass, if you will, when we're connected west to east, north to south. This administration understands that like no other. And we are so very lucky, so very, very lucky that they are on Beacon Hill. And I count myself so just so deeply honored uh, to be among them as their colleague and to serve their agenda, because their agenda, friends, is our agenda. Um, for the first time, I think, in a very long time, Beacon Hill sees Western Mass and sees it for all of our opportunities, for our gifts, for our unbelievable assets, and also for the things that are just not working and have been on the shoulders of communities for just far too long. And they want to help lift these burdens with us, and I know that, and it's going to take time, so we're going to have patience, 
but we're going to recognize today and other days like that. Um, <laughs> all right, maybe we won't have so much patience, um, says the Lieutenant Governor. Um, but anyway, it's just a joy to be with you. And I just know that today's announcement has been a long time coming. Uh, I want to recognize that Linda Dunlavy is in the house, and she's been part of the, the driving force. Um, and so uh, we love our sister Linda, and I love my sister Natalie, uh, and I'm going to turn it over, I believe, to Natalie now, and uh, thank you so much. Wow, it is a joy to be here with you all today, really. This is like a dream come true for us, really, it is. And I can't thank you all enough for being here today with us. Thanks to the Williams family for hosting us. Uh, and thanks for being in the first Franklin district, which includes 18 communities here in Western Massachusetts. Um, I, there's a lot of thanks here that I just want to give. And the, the first is to the Rural Policy, uh, RPAC, the Rural Policy Advisory Commission. Uh, Linda Dunlavy, the, the leader of this group, has brought the challenges facing rural communities to the statewide level and to the attention of all of us. And so, Linda Arpak, thank you for putting forth a plan that will help this office to hit the ground running and really make a difference. Linda, thank you. I also have to give my heartfelt thanks to my predecessor, Steve Kulik, who established the Rural Policy Advisory Commission and offered, go ahead, I'm happy with that. He offered the very first piece of legislation to, to establish an office of rural policy that I have carried forward and today became a reality thanks to the Healy Driscoll administration. I just want to recognize that Susie Kulik is here with us today and uh, give our deep love to Steve. And thank you to the Healy Driscoll administration. You have brought the very smartest minds and opened your hearts to rural and western Massachusetts. And you share our belief that every community in the Commonwealth deserves a shot mm -hmm. and that we deserve the resources to succeed. Mm -hmm. And you have delivered that today. We, report after report has been issued about the challenges facing rural communities. We've had people, state officials, talking about the demographic challenges, the shifts that we've seen here in Western Massachusetts. And you could have just talked about it, but instead you said something's got to change. And we are here today because you wanted to make that change. So thank you for that concrete action. We just want you to know that we're here for you as partners in this effort, and please don't hesitate to lean on anybody in this room. I imagine that you all are ready and willing to help, yes? Okay, all right. Thank you very much for being here today. This is really incredible. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Deerfield. My name is Casey Warren, I'm the town administrator. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm joined by many of my colleagues, one of whom, Sean Sahowski. He's the chair of the Small Town Administrators of Massachusetts. And he's the Athol Town Manager. So I've served as the town administrator in Deerfield, a town of 5,000 people, for a combined five years, and I've worked in municipal government for 26. As town administrator, I work with the select board to manage local matters, our municipal budget, and apply for grants to support our, ugh, I hate this. <laughs> to support town projects, such as our municipal campus. Our total fiscal year 23 budget is over 17 million, with a municipal staff of about 30. In a rural town, we oversee everything, from public safety to town roads to municipal buildings. Our employees are responsible for managing important and complex tasks with a limited budget and limited staff. As you know, it can be a challenge to navigate state bureaucracy, identify those grant opportunities, 
that fit a community's needs and apply and secure those funds. So this is the most amazing thing. And I, I've watched Linda pursue this along with Senator Comerford and Rep. Lay so for years. And so this is just such a huge win to have you make this concrete effort to assist rural towns. So I'm excited about today's announcement and the creation of the Director of Rural Affairs. It's an important step in the right direction um, to support economic development in the entire state and its recognition of the unique challenges facing small communities. So thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Rep. Blay, Senator Comerford, definitely Linda Dunleavy, and yes, Sean in the back. He's been definitely a voice. Um, you're prioritizing and valuing rural and small communities like Deerfield, which is amazing. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to w welcome Ben Clark to say a few words. Thank you, Casey. Um, so you might notice something. The farmers up here are dressed a little differently than the legislators. Um, so I, so I, I did come prepared, and, and we did hear that, that there was some, uh, you don't have to put them on now, but we did bring some hats. I brought some hats from uh, the governor, lieutenant governor, for uh, we, they did the chicken and the egg and, you know, seasoned maple. So, so just to remember your trip out here. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so, so I'm Ben Clark, uh, fourth generation owner of Clarkdale Fruit Farms here in Deerfield. Um, I'm joined uh, by my wife Lori and my parents Tom and Becky as well. Um, um, and uh, I'm actually the hat I'm wearing is my cousin. Uh, my cousin has a, a, a oyster farm on the vineyard, so um, so we have multiple family uh, businesses. Um, but I'm also president of the Mass Fruit Growers Association. Um, and I'm happy to be here because I've known Chip uh, my whole life, um, and we both continued our family's farming legacies, and we followed in the footsteps of our fathers. Um, and both Chip and I have also been fortunate to receive uh, state grants through MDAR to improve our farming operations. Um, in fact, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, the food security grant, um, we were, our farm was on the first round um, when, when the grants were received, and that was a, you know, it's a great, great thing for everybody. I'm glad there's permanent funding. Um, uh, so as, as people know, farmers face increasing challenges each year, uh, be it invasive pests, extreme weather, labor, or increased competition from out of state. Um, some of you may know uh, we grow peaches, and just this, this last month um, our peach crop was wiped out uh, mm. due to the extreme cold, and that's not just our farm but the entire state and, the, and New England. Um, so that's a, that's a big loss for a lot of farms. Um, but we all um, will benefit from increased access to state funds um, to ensure our collective success as farms and to strengthen our statewide food systems. Um, additionally, beginning farmers continue to face barriers to land access as development increases in our communities. Um, it's in the interest of all residents of the Commonwealth uh, that farmers thrive and continue to provide fresh, healthy, locally produced food. Um, I thank the governor and her administration for their commitment to assisting farms and rural communities and I look forward to working with you in the years ahead. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Joe and Natalie, um, who have always been great partners of farms, and, and look forward to working with you in the future. Um, and uh, lastly, I do want to also mention uh, thanking the governor and her team for the promotion of, of <laughs> Ashley. With a, we're very proud of a Deerfield native and a, and a great, great uh, person. All around. <laughs> and now I'll turn it back over to the governor. Any questions, or are we going to go tour? Sure. Yeah. Tour. All right. Let's do it. Great. We'll go. We'll go tour. Yep. Yep.
Well, thank you for the work that you do, and we will sure find ways to support your efforts. We believe in them deeply. Okay. Great. Thank you. Great. All right, we're going to go see a little bit. Yeah. We'll